Welcome, everybody. This is the next episode in the Union campaign. Um, we are still in the summer of 1861. Union forces are regrouping after the Battle of Winchester in the Valley, a major Union victory. But Hooker on the Rappahannock calls back his detached force under General Sherman, preparing for what looks like a concentration of Confederate forces there. Also, some Navy management orders to increase the naval blockade and much more in this next episode of the Grand Tactician, the Civil War. So, Major General James Shields, Army of the Shenandoah, just defeated General Porterfield, Army of the Northwest, at the Battle of Winchester in the Shenandoah Valley. With the assistance of Sherman's 1st Corps, casualties 5,500 to the Confederates, at a cost of 1600 Federal major victory. Shields will work on building up Winchester with depot. We'll probably f try to fortify the area as well and use that as a base of operations for future campaigns. At viewer requests, we have created the Vermont Redheads um, in their red in their red coats and black trousers. We also have the Lincolnites being formed up under Ed Baker, close friend to the president himself and congressman slash general political commander. The strategic situation after the Battle of Winchester, June 27th, 1861. National morale, 90 for the Confederate States, 93 for the Union. So very early in the war. Our weapons industry um, is behind the rebels but the rebels still don't have a strong weapons industry now the policies that we had voted on at the beginning of the campaign a few months ago we opted out of uh, industrialization for bread baskets so we'll probably after diplomacy won and importing some weapons we might do we might start the agriculture out or maybe take industrial two which will actually probably cap us on industrialization because I believe we won't be able to do industrialization three without um, the pre-war policy choice. We do have Go West. We do have Bread Basket active. So we'll focus on the Bread Basket option after we do industrialization two. Let's send the Eastern engineers over to help Shields finish the depot there. So Winfield Scott has the Eastern Reserve. That's main. That's basically our training army. Uh, we do have the Sloopy Artillery Reserve that is fully um, fully ready and recruited. We might transfer. We don't have the guns to make them better yet, but we will promote those guns. We might transfer this Artillery Reserve to the Valley or to Hooker's Army. And we're actually going to put the Sloopy Artillery Reserve under Hooker. We're also moving some and transferring some cavalry over to Hooker's Corps. We're going to upgrade the Alexandria Depot. In Ohio, we have McClellan's Army of the Ohio fortifying Lexington. We're actually going to move over to Frankfurt, probably put a fort there as well. Um, looks like the Confederates might be at Bowling Green as that has gone under Confederate occupation. So there may be a campaign here soon as we get more information about that Confederate unit there. Let's send a river reconnaissance fleet down the Ohio to see if we can't get a better picture of what rebel forces lie in southern Kentucky. We even had a, we even have a scout, uh, scouting squadron here at Clarksville. The Ohio reserves have been recruited. Um, we would like them to stay in camp and drill some more. They are still untrained before we send them to McClellan. David Hunter is in Missouri and trying to secure his base in eastern Missouri to protect Cairo and then probably move out from here. We're building a depot and fort to secure his left flank. Uh, we have engineers fortifying St. Louis. Starting to organize some of our blockading fleets. So we have a, uh, we already have the Chesapeake Bay blockaded. We're going to create a Carolina blockading fleet so right now five ships sloop, sloop of wars and some steam sloops so we'll wait for that fleet to get ready and then probably going into the fall we will try to create a force of 
Marines that will try to capture a couple of the ports if possible. Let's uh, move on to June 28th. You can see the retreating Army of the Northwest. And our engineers quickly going to Winchester. We are actually going to create an Army of West Virginia under Israel B. Richardson with Winfield Scott Hancock as the division command uh, with Edward Ord commanding some of the uh, one of the brigades so they're going to actually go over to the ohio west virginia border and make sure that flank is secure and possibly take wheeling and move in there if advisable so we're going to send them to marietta ohio so we deny mcclellan for now the reinforcements he desires so richardson going to marietta we move on to june 30th confederate navy striking at fort mchenry and we're going to try to engage them but they slip away so july 2nd we got sherman going to order back towards hooker's uh, main force at culpepper courthouse confederacy extends contracts to three years so they're going a manpower route right now we also have the uh, whiskey zwabs um, under john reynolds as a requested brigade So it looks like there's about 12,000 men here across the Rappahannock. 4,500 ready under the Army of Shenandoah and 8,000 under the Hampton Division. Army of the Northwest, 14,000 strong. We have 10,000 under Sherman and another 16 under Hooker across the Rappahannock. I feel we're a little lacking in cavalry in the... Ohio Department. So we're going to recruit a few more cavalry brigades. So unfortunately, we don't have a lot to draw from. We have to use the small size um, unit size. We're going to go with Robert Minty, even though he's not a cavalry commander. He has a little bit of um, higher ranking, but he has really good other stats, initiative, very good cunning. I think that might be suited for a cavalry division command. We got Thomas Williams, Custer, and Richard Johnson to round out the Cavalry Brigade Command. July 6th, not a lot of action. Both sides seem to be digging a little bit, building up supply depots, forts. Not a lot of movement going on. Same thing going on in North Central Kentucky as we move into July 8th. Forts being built, depots being built. The Army at Cincinnati, um, we did train, or we recruited a few more. Uh, but only 2,900 ready to go. Same thing in Missouri. Western engineers are fortifying St. Louis. We're going to head on to July 9th. I don't see a lot of movement by the rebels. We do have eyes on an army of Tennessee, about 11,000 strength. The Navy's going to put an order in for four more frigates and another 18 more brigs. Actually, we'll do even uh, nine, even more, nine more brigs, and we we'll still have shipyard capacities to spare. But let's get these ships built first. Let's get another scouting squadron on the river fleet uh, using the two finished third-rate steamers. We'll create a new fleet. Should do. We'll do Cincinnati Harbor, and we will pop them in, and they should be ready to go in a day or two. Yeah, they're still. They won't be ready quite yet. Uh, we also have the albatross here um, that can do some scouting as well on the rivers. All right, so moving past July 10th, going into the evening, into the 11th, Diplomacy 1 policy is selected, so we should get some better weapons. So we do get some Enfield rifle muskets, a few Lorenz rifle muskets. I'm sure I'll, we'll get those to the German brigades out west, but this should be a nice upgrade for us um, for the weapons we currently have. Let's make sure Siegel's Germans get the Lorenz rifles. So the Mainz Brigade and the Styrian Panthers. Let's go throughout the departments. Make sure we'll try to get at least the first division in each unit, each corps, getting some of the newer we uh, weapons. Still have a few Springfield and Enfields left. Why don't we go to the Shenandoah Valley Army? We just we did the West. We did the East. Let's get the Shenandoah Valley Army. Some weapon. The, we'll definitely do the Pennsylvania Reserves. They already have some Springfield muskets. It looks like the Army of Shenandoah is already decked out pretty well. So Army of West Virginia under Richardson. We'll make sure he can have some weapons because we might actually 
uh, move into West Virginia here in the middle of summer. And yeah, well, it looks like we've used up all the available upgrades and weaponry. Let's see about our, our cannons. Nope. Our industry's got to start kicking in. We will do the industry two policy first before we move on to breadbasket. So that'll be as far as we can go with industry, considering we do not have the starting campaign policy of industrialization. We'll see how the union um, baseline industry industry capacity will look like as the game progresses so we're gonna have richardson go to wheeling take wheeling and then probably go as soon as wheeling is secured we will take grafton and see uh, we'll find out real quickly if the confederates have a force there they moved porterfield into the valley so and i think he's back down yeah the army of the northwest helping defend virginia so this might be a perfect opportunity to strike into west virginia all right, so Richardson is on the move. A glorious victory at Chesapeake Bay. Two enemy ships sunk. Battle of Chesapeake Bay has ended with James River Squadron retreating. The engagement was a complete victory. All right, so just brushed aside the meager Confederate Navy. Richmond is the capital in this one. They went with uh, Old Dominion. Now we have our Army of Washington. That that's the regulars under Mansfield. So those are actual uh, veteran troops, which we did not give um, upgraded weapons to. We'll give them some. Well, they got some Springfields. All right, we used them all up. Let's send the Eastern Engin Engineers to Alexandria. We'll build a couple forts just in case. Um, a line to fall back on if need be. We're gonna. I've made a decision to take the Western Reserve Army or force, um, and move them to Cairo. I don't like Cairo being undefended right now. Being shielded by David Hunter a bit, but we'll we'll use Cairo as a base to train the troops. General Wool will move his training force um, and, garrison, and garrison Cairo, so doing double duty. Our Carolina blockade force is ready, but we're actually going to help the Atlantic blockading squadron out first a little bit so we'll order them at the mouth of the chesapeake looks like we have confederate uh, troops on the move so why don't we move into july the 13th our en eastern engineers are going to go to alexandria how's israel richardson doing slow movement because they're only um in the yellow readiness looks like there's a siege initiated somewhere Battle of Culpeper Courthouse. So it looks like forces engaged across the Rappahannock. Sherman and Philip St. George Coke. Forces look about even total. Confederate have the advantage. Let's see, is Hooker available? Army of the East. So it looks like Hooker is there also. Why don't we engage closer anyways? There says they're a part of the siege, but I don't see the cross swords over top of hooker here we have him on defensive okay there he is he's engaged in the battle now so why don't we assault this on the map our scouts report the enemy is near virginia and our army is to prepare for battle we are facing the army of the shenandoah under command of Joe Johnston with a strength of 7,000 men and 16 guns. The enemy army is green and the morale is reported to be confident. Reports indicate their supply situation outstanding. Our supply of our army is outstanding as well. Hooker is two hours away, so he'll be here soon. First Corps is already on the field. Hooker brings an awful lot of artillery with him too. Sloopy Reserve and the Ultima Ratio. Wilderness Battlefield and the one objective in the southwest corner of the map, the Brock Road um, intersection. So in the in wooded terrain. So we'll imagine that we are on the offen offensive. So we'll imagine the Confederates will try to dig in somewhere around here. Forces should be pretty even once um, once Hooker arrives, but it'll be about maybe we might be slightly down. Um, a couple thousand men compared to the Confederates based off the intelligence. Training for the Rebels, total average is eight. 
Our training is a 16, but our fighting spirit in enemy territory it will be much lower. Yeah, they have a 100 fighting spirit. Intelligence gatherings about the same. We're facing off against Armistead Hood, Pemberton, and Sibley as the division commanders. Also, Stuart Lane and McIntosh. Confederates probably have 85 guns, so they have a, quite a bit. We'll have a total of 92, so close in number. Sight advantage in guns to us. With it being so late in the evening, we're going to scout forward with Carlton's cavalry. We'll cross at the ford. The Confederates are most likely in the corner of the map over here by their objective. And Hooker arrives. Arriving over on the eastern part of the map. We've ordered the units in two columns. One towards Bullock's house and at Chancellorsville crossroads so they'll link up there and then move on towards wilderness church you can see carlton's calvary down the mineral spring road sherman behind hooker's hooker's main force coming down the road the river road and that is the end of the day so the army has consolidated at chancellorsville i've got gerard and his cavalry division Ordered to scout along the Furnace Road past Catherine Furnace and to scout the right, what we think might be the right flank of the rebel force at Brock Road. Again, they could be up closer, they could be further back, but that's the first task of Gerard's division. Carlton's cavalry will scout ahead of the main force along the Wilderness Church down the main road into this open field. Now, we'll have the disadvantage of this wooded terrain and using utilizing our artillery fire, depending, though, where the rebels have lined up. So there is this open field, and depending on how they have situated their defense, we will make that determination of where to put our firepower. There's a lot of unit cohesion that is broken, so they're going to need some time to regroup after the overnight marching all right carlton's cavalry ordered forward to the wilderness church gerard ordered to the furnace road sumner and williams regaining cohesion but are still disrupted so is runyon so our cavalry scouts have spotted the rebel force in the open field in front of Orange Plank Road. We could try to move the main attack through Hazel Grove, through the ravine, and try to hit their right flank, maybe get a uh, division and the cavalry, especially Gerard, around uh, through the Welford Furnace Road and in behind. We've ordered Sumner's division and Runyon's division to Hazel Grove. Sherman... And his division under Williams to the right of Hazel Grove. We're going to still keep scouting with Gerard. So we're going to let them advance further in and around the rebel right flank. All right, so orders are given and the units move out. Gerard ordered further down the Welford Furnace Road. You can see here. It's a nice ridge line right in front of that fortified position. If we can get some a little bit of supported artillery right here, we might be able to blast them, but they are entrenched too. So I think we'll focus in on this right flank. We just need to find out how far it extends. You can see elements of Hunt's artillery, the Sloopy Artillery Reserve, arriving at the Win uh, Wilderness Church. Runyon is getting into position. Sherman stopped. I thought we had him moving fur further forward. Gerard trying to reconnaissance the far right and rear of the rebel position. Sumner and Runyon trying to 
get into battle formation and they're gonna have to move through the wilderness terrain to try to get to the rebel right flank we'll we use we'll use william's division kind of as the frontal attack to hold them into position with the support of hunt's artillery the sloopy reserve we also have burnside's ultima ratio moving in to support runyon and sumner so hooker's corps ordered into the woods around catherine furnace into the ravine area looks like the rebels have taken notice and are shifting their lines we're ordering two batteries into the woods in front of the rebel position under the sloopy reserve you have carlton as support if need be williams division is marching forward to the front of the rebel line and hooker's corps is getting into position on the right of the line all right so units are moving let me readjust the position here maybe we can get a better look first battery under hunt we're gonna try to so baker's militia brigade it will not is refusing to halt orders as they've become disrupted in the march but they are ignoring all halt orders. We're trying to get Sumner in range. As the march in the rough terrain has definitely affected their coordination. Yeah, Baker refusing all orders. We've lost control of this brigade. Trying to get Runyon. It's actually Runyon's unit. Trying to get Runyon over there to get in range of Bugle Call. Maybe to get orders to him quickly it should be interesting to see what happens here yeah every halt order has been refused skirmishers at least open up and are responsive they know that they need to defend themselves although at least we didn't run headlong into the fortified position looks like the rebels are addressing garrard in their rear so we're actually going to pull garrard out of there probably detach him you should be able to issue orders quicker Stuart has withdrawn gerard needs to get orders to him order delay active looks like they're preparing for a fight now we'll end this one right here as the battle just beginning for the second battle of Culpepper. as things begin to heat up the Forces under Hooker struggling in the rough terrain to get to their destination point. Although it looks like the Rebels have pulled some troops away from their left. Although marching in front of their position to get to their left might be a better decision now. But we've kind of committed to this attack on their right center right here. And that could split between the two forces now. We just need to get these forces in the center or the right center. Uh, moving in this terrain they're gained cohesion but baker kind of lost command range and runyon's been kind of stuck where he's at slow to move but hopefully we can get buell and runyon moving and we can hit that confederate right all right well we'll see you we'll pick this up on the next one i'll see you then